Hello, my name is Shemaine Hurtado. Welcome to Yoga Ball Balance Dressage. I am a gold, silver, and bronze USDF medalist for excellence in first level through Grand Prix Dressage. And I have been a rider for over 30 years and a trainer for over 20 years. And this series' is genesis came from a conversation with my veterinarian, John Halford, DVM. We were discussing fear in riders, and does that come from a lack of balance? This question has always plagued me as an instructor. What do I tell my clients that they can do to improve their riding when they can't be at the barn? So I hope this series can help answer that question and help you improve your riding and your muscle memory. Hello, and welcome to my introduction of Yoga Ball Balance Dressage. We are going to talk about our seat and weight aids and shifting those weight aids to influence your horse. So, I have this white line here that represents the horse's spine, and when I want to put my weight on my left seat bone, I will make that spine move, okay? And the horse responds similarly to this. So, when I sit straight here, I want that spine to be even. I think it's even on here. And uh, so, when I shift my weight to the right, I want that spine to move away from my seat. If it doesn't move away, then either my horse has been sort of trained away from that response, because young horses do respond to this. Okay, I still train young horses or start them, and they do respond to this right away. I mean, totally instinctive. So, you want to shift that weight aid and move your seat around. When I warm my horse up, I always walk down the long side and try to keep my reins as even as I can on a long rein, and just shift my weight and wait for a few strides, and they usually start to bend their head and their neck over to that direction. And then when I shift my weight to the left, the same thing, the horse starts to bend their neck because their whole spine moves. So you want to try to feel that on the yoga ball. So you want to move the horse's spine over, okay? Now that's just side to side. So when I want to move my horse not only sideways but also forward, then I will sit back more and I will call it weighting my seat bone. So here is sitting on my seat bone and letting that horse move away from it sideways. And here is weighting my seat bone and you see how it shifts forward. So I want to ask this horse to move its shoulder forward to my outside rein so that now my horse is doing a slight leg yield or a slight shoulder in, depending on how I turn my shoulders. So we'll address that later in other videos, but that's a beginning for you. Okay, you can see my spine of my horse is coming straight down the seam of my pants, and I want to, again, show you how to influence the horse with your seat bones by changing your position of the seat bone. So when you want to sit on your left seat bone, you can see how then the horse moves away from my left seat bone. When I want to shift to the right seat bone, there's that. This is just side to side, just moving my hips, one side to the other, right, left, right, left. And I put my weight down into my stirrup a little bit there, but I try not to shift my shoulders too much. It's mostly my hips moving and not my shoulders. Then when I want to put more weight into that aid, then I would say, Put your weight on that seat bone and then sit back and weight it and make the ball or the horse go forward in front of your seat. So again, right seat bone down and then right seat bone weighted and then straight and then left seat bone down and left seat bone weighted. And that was just my hips. My shoulders don't move much at all. So a fraction, but not very much. So again, right seat bone down, right seat bone weighted, straight, left seat bone down, left seat bone weighted, okay? So both seat bones weighted. This is how you drive your horse, drive, 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 okay? This is the side view, left seat bone down, left seat bone weighted, okay? So again, left seat bone down, left seat bone weighted. 
So you always go forward. And you see the creases in my pants here when I go forward. So I'm here, straight, and then I sit on it a little bit, and then I squeeze my seatbelt underneath me or my butt underneath me. So I get that action of forward driving to my outside ring with the horse. Okay? And then the next thing that we will address is initiating a gait with your seat um, and how to change tempo in the transitions. But first we'll initiate the gait with the seat, okay? And so when you are asking for a trot, you want to start that as much as you can with your seat. So I'm going to start asking for the trot with my seat, okay? Now I can stop asking by tightening my stomach muscles here and then release when I go to walk and sit up tall again and be straight. So again, I'm sitting here, I'm walking, let's say, and I'm going side to side, and then I want to trot, so I start trotting. Okay, and that tells the horse to start moving to the rhythm of my seat. Okay, if uh, that doesn't happen, you might need a little squeeze. You might need a little kick, you know, but you will be able to train your horse to respond to this by doing that. So if you start with your seat and nothing really happens, I don't want you up there pushing, 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 and um, not getting a response. So same as teaching your dog to sit. When you teach your dog to sit, you say sit, and then you press their butt down into the ground, right? And that teaches them what your word is asking them to do. Same thing with this, except for you're describing it a lot differently with your body language. So you want to start with your seat, tuck your tailbone under you, and start here. And if that doesn't work, then give a little squeeze with the leg, or a little cluck, or even a little tap with the whip occasionally. So, um, so that will help your horse learn how to respond. And if you repeat it, you know, at least five or six times um, at the beginning, I bet you anything your horse will pick it up and be awesome and forward from your seat and lovely. So, um, again, when you are picking up that chop, you're going this way, and then when you pick up the canter, you're going inside seat forward, inside seat forward, okay? And when I do the right, I'm going right seat forward. I bring my outside leg back here, and I ask my horse with my outside leg, because the outside hind leg of the horse initiates the stride sequence in the canter. So outside leg back, inside leg a little bit forward, you can see my knees. And then I'm going to drive with that hip, okay? So now I'm changing it and I'm going to drive with my left hip here. Alright? And so that's how you can initiate that canter transition. And you can do this 20 times each direction to get your body to do it the right way. So first you want to be on that seat bone, so just like we talked about before, seat bone down, not weighted, just down, and then start with that inside seat bone pushing forward. So now you are going to push your hip forward, but you're not going to weight your seat bone and push the horse to the outside. You're going to lift your seat bone forward to the inside because you want that inside left front leg to go forward for you, and that shoulder specifically. So, um, so that is that. And then when you are trotting and you are using your seat to trot here, you can change the tempo. You can speed it up, a little medium trot. You can slow it down, a more collected short trot, a pee off, just one, two, three, here. And then a forward, 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 medium trot. And then back to a slower trot here. But it's all just by changing your rhythm, okay? And your horse, I guarantee you, will learn how to respond to this. So when you are um, changing your seat, you want to think about how you have a muscle chain, okay? Your stomach, when it tightens, so does your butt muscles, your buttock muscles. So when your stomach tightens, your buttock muscles tighten, and then your inner thigh muscles even a little bit tighten. You'll hear a lot of people say don't tighten your inner thighs. And what they're talking about is not pushing yourself up out of the saddle with your inner thighs, okay? But in this instance, you almost can't help but to tighten your 
inner thigh muscles slightly. So, stomach muscles tight, lower abs. That tucks your tailbone underneath you because your buttock muscles also engage at that point. And then a little bit of inner thigh muscle. So, tight, 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 tight. That would be my half all. And then I loosen. And then I go forward. Okay, ask my horse to go forward. Okay? So, you can do this a million times on the yoga ball. Just practice, practice, practice doing these exercises so that you can develop those muscles to work the horse appropriately and be balanced on your horse so that you can work your horse appropriately. So, you know, 20 times pick up the canter. Do a flying change. Here, here. Do another flying change. Here, here. So you can learn how to do flying changes just by changing your aid. So the flying change is really just changing your seat, changing the aid. So when you pick up the canter, the way you pick up the canter is the way you ask for a flying change, okay? And so this is how you want to do this. And then the trot, same thing. So initiate that trot, 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 trot. And I have a nice big moving horse here. My ball bounces back at me, but so does my horse, right? So then when I want to shorten that stride, I can shorten that stride. And then when I want to lengthen that stride, I can lengthen that stride. So this is what you want to practice on the yoga ball. And you can see I'm just slightly, you know, breathing a little bit. I'm also talking too. But I want you to think about shortening here and lengthening here. Okay? And then come to a halt. So pull the seat bone under you and halt. Okay? This should get you started with your yoga ball. And this is a large yoga ball. This is a 75 centimeter yoga ball. Uh, behind me I have the smaller 60, or I'm sorry, 55 centimeter ball. This would be for about 5 foot person, not uh, right around 5 feet. Um, and I bought that one for my daughter. <laughs> and this one I use. It's a little wide. Um, so uh, if you're somewhere in between or a little longer legged, then you might want the 65 centimeter. So 75 centimeter, 55 centimeter. I don't have a 65 centimeter to show you. Also, um, you may want to get the type that has the stability in it, and that has a little, um, I, I assume, sand in the bottom that keeps it from rotating as much as without. Okay? So you might consider getting a stability yoga ball if you feel like this has too much bounce in it, because this does have quite a bit of bounce in it, okay? But that should get you started. Have a great time. I hope this really helps your riding. Thank you so much for tuning in.